What's going on, everybody? All year long, I'm talking about video games, but in quarter four, it's easily the meatiest of them all. October opens the floodgates for some of the most anticipated titles coming out. And in this video, I'll be covering titles that will absolutely be making my list and some I'll have to pass on despite my interest in them. Money in the budget, time I have to play, and quality of release all make up my decisions in this season's selections of what I like to call the video game gauntlet. But first, Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zero Sadu and I am a diehard gamer. I've been gaming for the majority of my life and gaming has been the backbone of most of my friends' circles. And around every time this year, me and my friends get together and we start talking about, you know, what games we're interested in. We begin to coordinate our vacation time as, and as well as budget our funds for the inevitable game release or hardware release that is bound to come out within these holiday seasons. October is in fact the first month that begins the enabling of my seasonal spending. However, there is simply not enough time or money to go around to justify scooping up all these things that are coming out. And frankly, some things that are newly announced aren't exactly worth the price, like the newly announced PS5. Have you ever wanted to pay more money so you can pay more money? Well, now you can with Sony's newly trimmed down digital model PS5. Starting at an additional $50, you can get all the power and performance of the already available digital model, just with more of a summer bikini body it's always wanted. And of course, the addition of some highly requested modular features for even more spending, like the new vertical stand sold separately. Or maybe you want to bring back some of the curves it lost over the summer. Give your digital PS5 a new butt lift with, with an add-in disk drive that you could have just bought together in the first place. I... I... Uh, I, please, if you're looking to get a PS5 this Christmas, the digital model that's currently available is sitting at $399. It has all the price and performance, and it even comes with the vertical stand. It is, in fact, the cheapest way that you can be introduced to the PS5 systems, and as soon as these models are sold out, the more expensive modular option will begin to the, be the only available PS5s in the market. <coughs> so yeah, October. It's got games. Too many, in fact. And uh, first, let's talk about some of the games I'm most excited for. First up, we got Sonic Superstars. When this trailer launched, it started with a very specific flex. Starting with a retro Green Hill Zone and quickly breaking into a brightly lit 2.5D, as though Sonic broke through into a new dimension, dashing back and forth from retro to modern, I immediately thought they did it. To me, that was a really specific flex, that the Sonic team came here to recapture the nostalgia born from the original Genesis games, now with that modern aesthetic that it's been trying to reach for a long time. Sure, there's a couple of games that do a decent amount of jobs, but it impressively failed at that experience with Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1. Sonic Superstars looks to be another high point in the franchise by aiming to be a fun game that not only can be enjoyed by the original Sonic fans, but the whole family, with the inclusion of Couch Co-op. It doesn't take much for me to purchase a Sonic game, and this looks like an especially good time to play with my wife. I'll be picking this one up on my PS5, but I can see this one holding up on any platform of your choice when it comes out on October 17th. Let's continue the nostalgia train here with another family-friendly couch co-op, Super Mario Wonder. The original Mario cast are often the only games that get me to dust off my Nintendo Switch, because sometimes you just need to chill out with pretty colors, bubbly animations, pleasant soundtrack, and a pipe full of... Uh, <clears throat> plumber. Plumbers, yes. Uh, yeah, I skipped several of these games in the past, and honestly, most of them hold up well. But this year just felt right. Like, I, like I said, I need more games to play with minimal commitment that's quick and easy to play at home, and maybe at the bar with a coworker. It's slow season, so I get some downtime. It definitely helped for me that this this was a part of a purchase with of the, the Nintendo voucher program, which is kind of something in the ballpark of buy two games, save $20. And I have a bit of a rule when it comes to Nintendo games. I really only am looking to buy exclusive titles. And I genuinely can't get the Mario experiences anywhere else. It's a good year for Mario fans. So thanks, Nintendo. Now, although Nintendo has a very loyal fan base, I wouldn't exactly call this title a highly anticipated one, and if you check your calendars, this game does share a release date with a pretty massive game. It in fact might be the biggest and most anticipated PS5 exclusive, and that of course is Spider-Man 2. I can't stress enough that 
Insomniac has delivered one of the best superhero games with this franchise. They're, they're approachable, fun, and honestly breathtaking playgrounds that maximize the potential of the hardware that they're on. These stories have been well-written, funny, and edge-of-my-seat exciting that have kept me on marathon gaming sessions just so I can get those platinum trophies. I genuinely expect no less from the upcoming sequel. Plenty of information is available to make an informed decision about this purchase, and there is no shortage of hot takes that might mislead you. No, this game isn't co-op. You do, however, swap between Miles and Peter throughout this game. The length of this game has been reported to be shorter than the first one, but about twice the length of Miles Morales. That being said, 30 to 40 hours swinging around New York for my next PlayStation Platinum is going to feel well worth my purchase. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love recreations of my hometown in video games, and swinging around as Spider-Man and Miles in previous releases was never short of exhilarating. And even when there was nothing left to do, swinging around taking pictures can really satisfy. This game features more of what made the previous games great, <clears throat> additions to an already awesome combat system, a larger map with the inclusions of Brooklyn and Queens, and even better performance and quality, maximizing the performance ceilings of the PS5. This is what I would consider a console seller, but do watch out for the price gouging that comes with the limited edition bundles, as sexy as they are. Spider-Man and Mario both drop on October 20th, so uh, which one are you playing? The last game on my short list of games that I will 100% be getting and playing on release is Alan Wake 2. It has been over a decade since the first game, and this sequel is almost hard to believe even existing, but I'm very glad it does. I hardly remember the story in the first game, and if you know nothing about it, the best I got for you is Alan Wake is a writer essentially trapped in a nightmare of his own creations, and he's been trying to write himself out of it which is a terrible way to define this psychological horror that it's known as. This game looks to continue the cinematic storytelling with mind-bending visuals that might actually scare the crap out of me, which doesn't happen often because I don't really play horror games. Plenty of gameplay information is available on this title as the developers want to be transparent as possible without offering too much in the realm of spoilers. But what I know is that this game will feature two playable story paths that intertwine and can be played in any order. Personally, I love interwoven narratives with multiple character perspectives in games and in other mediums because it adds for the lore density that I'm looking for and it could really help me question my own perceptions of where the story's even going. If you need a dark spooky game for Halloween, this will surely hit the spot and it's releasing on the 27th. Now there's some games on my list that I do want to bring up. There are games out this month that I expect that I will be getting some of but for me, they're more of like on my maybe want to get, might get, waiting for a sale, totally depends on where my impulses are at, at the time. So I'm gonna just go ahead and rapid fire the ones that I are, are in that ballpark of the maybe almost yes, because I think they're good games, but well, let's just run it through. <clears throat> First on the list is Forza Motorsport. Now, uh, I do have this game currently available to me through Game Pass, and I actually have it installed. I just haven't really been motivated to play it. it it's, I, I don't think this is a bad game, and I think it'll certainly scratch the itch for motorsport fans, but I've, I've heard a few things about this game, and it's kind of just feeling a little incomplete, and it seems like the developers made some gameplay adjustments that have kind of slowed or hindered the flexible experience of customization. So I still got it installed. I may check it out sometime, but I'm really not in a rush to recommend it. And outside of Game Pass, I am certainly not one to recommend buying it. I think this game is going to be a solid experience for racing fans, but I don't think it's going to be a step forward for racing sims. I personally think I might get more mileage out of Gran Turismo 7. Next up on my list is Lords of the Fallen. Now, by the time of this upload, Lords of the Fallen should also be available. And uh, coming off the coattails of Lies of P, I'm hearing some great things about this game. Now... It's like probably sitting in one of my virtual carts right now because like I do want to play this game But I think I'm just waiting to play it with a friend Someone's probably gonna hit me up on the side one day and goes are we ready to play and that's probably when I'll just hit buy Obviously if I can hold off and maybe catch a sale But I don't expect the sale coming for this game anytime soon Especially with a game that's doing already well out the gate So if you needed another souls like fix after lies of P, I think this one's a safe purchase to define another sinner. Rise Number three on my list of I'm probably going to play, but just kind of not in a rush is Endless Dungeon. 
this is another like kind of indie offering top down cooperative roguelike and i have such a sweet spot for them it's totally in the it's totally one of my guilty pleasures this game is also not an expensive game i'm it's sitting in my steam wish list and i'm probably going to pick this one up i'm just kind of waiting on a few friends to say hey yeah we're going to try to play that too so we can just go ahead and grind out several hours of these kinds of games if you're not in a rush to pick up another one of these games that i'm sure is going to age well in your in your steam library i i suspect this one will also make a sale before the year is up just because steam likes to do that so i think this one's a safe buy another guilty pleasure on my list at number four is hot wheels 2 unleashed this game's a little hard to sell at a $50 price point because it's especially when you have other cart-like games such as Disney Speedstorm for free that could really scratch that itch for a couple hours. However, it does justify its price point because I know this game to have a robust offering of content and genuinely is a solid game. It's just really hard to sell a game like this in 2023 when I know the player base is going to be hindered by that price point. And, and so like me personally, I played the first one. I thought it was a ton of fun, but the player base was niche and like none of my friends could justify picking it up at the time, even if they had the interest in playing it. I think this one might be a solid skip and I, I might just play it on impulse and it, if it comes out on a sale or perhaps one of the PlayStation Plus or Game Pass library editions. The first one is still available and still a ton of fun and it probably a cheaper price. I know it to be a good game. I, if you're looking for a Hot Wheels game, might be a safe get. Number five on my list is Metal Gear Solid, the the remaster collections. I, I don't even, uh, listen, I'm in no rush to pick this game up. I've played the series. I've beaten it multiple times. If you're new, if you've never heard of the Metal Gear Solid franchise, get this game. It's great. Play it. It's it's so worth playing if you've never played it before. But I, I'm just not, like, I, I'll just wait. I'll get it on a sale and I'll add it to my collection. I might not even play it then either, but it's just one of those that I'll have for the sake of having because, you know, I'm a collector, so. But lastly on my, my, my hot list here is Ghost Runner 2. This is another awesome game if you're a first-person shooter adrenaline junkie like myself. This one I'm absolutely going to be getting on the PC. I'm not getting it at this moment simply because I just don't really have the time to play it in this month but I will absolutely be picking it up because it, the first one was great and it kept me playing for several hours. And honestly, it, it even functioned as a, a name trainer for PC and made me better at PC controls. So uh, I, if, you, if you're really looking for something like that, I, I, I highly, highly recommend this one. It's, it's also gonna be beautiful. Like it, and it might even f play great and look great on the consoles. I haven't actually checked it out myself, but the, I, you know, PC is where I'm going with this one. So. You know, check it out. Whew, okay, this made, this video was a little dense. I might've been overcompensating a little bit here for not uploading in a while, but I've been cooking this one up for several days. I will be playing some of these games on my live stream. So if you are interested in getting a deeper dive into some of these games, why don't you swing on by my Twitch channel and uh, ask me about them because you know, I, I just wanna help you guys make informed purchases and, and we can share each other's commentary. If there's some games that are on your list that didn't make their way onto mine, or if you just disagree, you know, you, you don't like my picks, go ahead and comment down below. I really do love catching up with comments throughout the week and, and engaging in these conversations because honestly, you know, your opinion is just as valid as my own. I, I'm just out here saying them. So let's, let's have a conversation. And of course, thank you again to anybody and everybody who swings by the channel, who is in my, in my Discord and constantly reminding me that it's okay to take the time I need because again, this isn't my job. This is just something I love to do. And I don't feel great when I can't get to it. And just honestly, life comes first. And there's been, been a bunch of stuff that's been going on. It keeps me from doing this. So I just, I'm, I, you know, thank you. I, I stay insanely humbled and appreciative of any and all of the kinds of support. I just hope to continue to make something that you find entertaining. And, uh, and I will continue to do so. So thank you. And until next time, I'm out.